Hi, I'm Sebastian Couture of the Epicenter Podcast. I'm here in Basel, Switzerland for the very first edition of the Hyperledger Global Forum. It was a four-day event organized by the Linux Foundation that gathered over 700 participants from startups to developers and enterprise, all building applications on the technologies in the Hyperledger Greenhouse. So while I was at the event, I had the opportunity to speak with community members, learn about what they're building, and how they're contributing to the tools and technologies in the Hyperledger family. So here's my conversation with Matthew Davey, Managing Director at Kiva. Hi, uh, my name is Matthew Davey. I work at Kiva, which is a big international nonprofit that does microfinance, and I run all of our technology for financial inclusion. Kiva is a 13-year-old nonprofit. It's a 501c3 based out of San Francisco. We were started in 2005 by a bunch of folks out of PayPal saying, what would it look like if we kind of built the PayPal of nonprofits? And what that ended up looking like is a two-sided marketplace where we go out and in the developed world, we crowdfund money to loan to unbanked customers. Um, so it's a platform that's done $1.3 billion of lending in 85 countries to borrowers who have zero access to the financial sector. And what that really looks like is you'll look at it and it looks like a normal technology company, but the back end to show you how analog it is today is literally people getting on scooters with wads of cash and driving out to villages that are 100 miles away from internet connectivity and doing lending activity out there um, to bring the banking system and try to extend it out to them. So Kiva is always assessing new and emerging technologies to see if they can help us extend our impact in the unbanked world. And when it comes to distributed ledger and blockchain technologies, there's two really important vectors that, that we've been following for the past couple years and that got us to the point of starting to implement with some blockchain solutions now with Hyperledger. Um, one of them is the ability to have trust in the data without having to have trust in all of the entities in the system. The tamper evidence or tamper proofness of blockchains it's really interesting because we're talking about a patchwork of thousands of microfinance institutions around the world that are lending money in the unbanked world that are trying to extend the banking system. And so the fact that you can trust the data generated by all of them, if you use a distributed ledger, use a tamper evident data source, is really powerful because we don't have to go out and either force or try to convince them to use the central trust authority. The second thing with distributed ledger technology is the cost that because you distribute the processing power, because you distribute data storage, this is the only solution today we see that can economically scale to serve 1.7 billion unbanked customers around the world, because that's how many adults are outside the banking system. And so the two of those together has gotten us pretty excited about the potential for this technology to be revolutionary at the base of the economic ladder. We uh, started by really assessing all of the blockchain solutions and distributed ledger solutions out there. Um, and we came back to using Hyperledger and specifically we're using Hyperledger Indie and Hyperledger Fabric. We kind of came back for two reasons. Um, one is the way we're deploying actually lends itself very well to a permissioned network. Um, and I can talk more about that. But the second reason really, the one that I want to, to talk about is interoperability. That the way Indie is looking at identity is very much in line with the W3C standards and what we see as the future of interoperable identity. And the same goes for Fabric with how it looks at smart contracts and with shared data collections, actually lends itself very well to how we think the data needs to flow in the unbanked world around um, credit reporting. And so the two of those together provide a great enterprise solution foundation for us to start from. And then second I'll add, Kiva does not come from a place of being blockchain experts. We have not been in the space for a long time. We've been in the world of the unbanked for a long time. And so working with the project where a lot of the foundation is built up for you is super helpful for an organization like Kiva. Yeah, so identity really is the foundation of everything we're trying to solve at Kiva um, in terms of technology for financial inclusion. And I'll give you very specifically, let's pick a country like Sierra Leone. There are 15 microfinance institutions in Sierra Leone that we work with. And they go out in the field, they drive out on these scooters and deploy cash, and they're recording transactions in a paper ledger, like in, an, in a notebook. With that, they're currently already generating 15 different credit files on these individuals. So if I'm a borrower in Sierra Leone and I work with three MFIs, currently today, there are three very thin credit files on me that cannot be merged because the identity I have with each of these MFIs 
doesn't know about the other identities. And so the first thing we need in order to bring banking services to the unbanked is the ability to stitch those identities together. And that's the reason we're talking about using uh, Hyperledger ND and identity as the foundation because that identity brings the ability to stitch the data together. And once we can do that, everything else flows. We can start building up thicker credit files. We can use that to price risk better. And that's what eventually leads to more capital being able to flow into the unbanked world. Fabric just does a really good job on two fronts. One, in terms of being a smart contract engine, and right now we're not using executable smart contracts, but having a system that is built for the types of ledgers and contracts we might want to have down the line is very helpful. The second one is it has this concept of private and shared data collections, which when you think about the financial sector and you think about yours and my financial data, you're actually thinking about, I have data with, let's call it, four different financial institutions. Shared data collections allows the data between me and each one of those banks to be shared, which is actually very efficient because otherwise I would need my copy of my data with, with Chase Bank and my copy of my data with HSBC, and they would each need their copies of that. But if I could have a shared collection with each of them, that's actually very powerful because now myself and HSBC can have one ledger that we share that is not shared without one of our permission with JP Morgan Chase. And so that's an, a neat little advantage of Fabric, but at the end of the day, it comes down to it's just a very robust smart contract engine for doing a ledger. Since we first got serious at the beginning of 2018 about doing something in the decentralization space, um, we started with Brian here at Hyperledger, and he kind of, you know, us being Kiva, a nonprofit, Hyperledger being part of the Linux Foundation. First, they just kind of opened a bunch of doors for us, not just within the foundation, but with every ledger out there with, you know, you can talk about your chain, Ethereum, Ripple, everybody. Um, and we actually came full circle and came back to them. And after assessing, everybody said, hey, we're going to build our first version of this on Hyperledger. Then they've been incredibly helpful with thinking through security, thinking through deployment challenges. And so just a lot of it has been us bootstrapping ourselves with Mindshare in the DLT space. They've been very helpful with that. And the footnote I'll add is I've been fortunate to be involved in the social impact working group that's been coming and getting pulled together. And it's just been nice to be working with people in the space that are actually trying to make sure it does get extended for impact and doesn't just make it so that I have like a smart contract to get my blue bottle coffee. Yeah, the biggest thing I'm excited about for the future going forward, both with our efforts and with Hyperledger in general, is this big push towards interoperability. And one of the big scary things that I see out there in the decentralized space is silos of these decentralized networks. And again, I talked earlier about us being very bullish on needing interoperable identity and needing this to be extendable outside of just Kiva's efforts. And that's one of the things I, I see the industry in general going towards and Hyperledger and Linux Foundation being good leaders of is making sure that everything that is done here is standardized so that it can be extended beyond just the thing that each organization is doing. And so for Kiva, I'm very hopeful that all of our efforts we're gonna to do to continue deploying this technology in countries around the world doesn't just build this kind of Kiva financial inclusion machine, but it can serve as a springboard for other efforts of people bringing health insurance or bringing educational services, using the identity and using the financial data that we're gonna be building to extend for a much greater impact.